Hey guys, this is Jason Matthew from Trinidad and Tobago and welcome to Biochem GM, the YouTube channel. So today we're going to be looking at gluconeogenesis part 2. And yes, that means there's a gluconeogenesis part 1. So in gluconeogenesis part 2, we're going to be focusing on the first bypass reaction of gluconeogenesis. Now just to, to recap some, a few things. In gluconeogenesis part 1, we are saying that we are going from two molecules of pyruvate to one molecule of glucose. So it's kind of like the reversal of glycolysis, but it's not quite. Yes, there are seven enzymes that are common between glycolysis and gluconeogenesis, but there were three enzyme reactions in glycolysis that were unidirectional, only went in one way. So what, was, what were those three enzymes in glycolysis that only went in one direction? I know you know the answer, guys, so you should be rattling it off right now. So let's go. Hexokinase, PFK1, which is also known as phosphofructokinase 1, and lastly, pyruvate kinase. Now, pyruvate kinase was the last enzyme reaction in glycolysis. So what reaction was that, guys, that pyruvate kinase catalyzed? That's right, it converted PEP, or phosphoenopyruvate, into pyruvate. Now, from your glycolysis lecture, you know that that reaction of pyruvate kinase catalyzed is a very energetically favorable reaction. And if it is a very energetically favorable reaction in, in one direction, it means that if you use pyruvate kinase to convert pyruvate to PEP, in other words, going in reverse direction, it's going to have a huge activation barrier. Therefore, we couldn't use pyruvate kinase to go from pyruvate to PEP. So in gluconeogenesis, we have to bypass that pyruvate kinase. We have to do another series of reactions to go from pyruvate to PEP. And because that reaction, that pyruvate kinase in glycolysis, catalyzed was so energetically favorable, it means that what we have to do now in gluconeogenesis is actually do two reactions to bypass that one reaction in glycolysis. Now in gluconeogenesis part one, I named those two enzymes that bypass the pyruvate kinase reaction. Can you remember them guys? Come on, you know it. That's right. It's pyruvate carboxylase and PEPCK. So in part two now, we're going to see them in action. So I know you're excited to start, so let's go straight into it, guys. All right. Now, again, you know, to understand gluconeogenesis, we need to talk a lot about glycolysis. And that's why I say you need to know both of them inside out. I know we did glycolysis in, in level one, and we are not doing gluconeogenesis in level two. But it is extremely important that you understand these two pathways, or else you'll be in some trouble. Now, you remember... In glycolysis, all the enzymes were found in the cytosol. Well, in gluconeogenesis, it's slightly different. Some of the enzymes are mitochondrial enzymes, and some of the enzymes are cytosolic. In fact, we start in the mitochondria. As you can see in this diagram here, there's a nice mitochondria drawn for you here. All right. Oh, by the way, this was done by scratch from Biochem GM, so we are already trying to raise the bar with our animations and stuff. Please give us some feedback if you think you like this and you want some more. We're really excited about what we are doing right now. So while I discuss first bypass reaction, I want you to be always aware of where you are. So this is the cytosol on the outside, and you have the mitochondria on the inside. So you have the outer membrane, the inner membrane, and then inside here will be the matrix. So first of all, pyruvate enters the mitochondrial matrix. The pyruvate is going to be converted to oxaloacetate. The enzyme that is catalyzing this reaction is pyruvate carboxylase. And anytime you hear the word carboxylase, you should know that that is an enzyme that is catalyzing a carboxylation reaction. And what exactly is a carboxylation reaction, people? Well, it's simple. It's when you are adding carbon dioxide to the substrate. So again, let's recap. 
pyruvate carboxylase is carboxylating pyruvate, is adding a CO2 group to pyruvate to become oxaloacetate. Now the cofactor for pyruvate carboxylase is biotin. This cofactor is needed for all carboxylation reactions. So other carboxylase enzymes will also use biotin. All right? Now what happens is that the CO2 first binds to the biotin cofactor. And for that to happen, it has to be a an activated process. And we use one molecule of ATP. So one molecule of ATP is converted to ADP plus PI. And that activates the binding of CO2 to biotin. Once the CO2 molecule is bound to biotin, it is then transferred onto pyruvate and is converted to oxaloacetate. Now, pyruvate carboxylase is known as an ABC enzyme. A for ATP, B for biotin, and C for CO2. So that is a, a quick way in which you can remember what this enzyme does. So you know that pyruvate carboxylase is an ABC enzyme. A for ATP, B for biotin, and C for CO2. And you will see as we continue with metabolism that there will be probably two other ABC enzymes that you're going to come across. Right, so now we, form, we have formed the oxaloacetate. Here's the dilemma, guys. Oxaloacetate, once formed, it cannot leave the cell. It cannot pass through the mitochondrial membrane. So this oxaloacetate cannot pass through the mitochondrial membrane. It is, the mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to oxaloacetate. There are no transporters for oxaloacetate. But we need to get that oxaloacetate outside to continue the, the other series of reactions. So the mitochondria does something very clever. It converts the oxaloacetate to malate. All right? And the enzyme that they use is malate dehydrogenase. But let's look at what's happening here. NADH is converted to NAD+. And anytime you see a reaction where NADH is being converted to NAD+, it means that the substrate, in this case is ox oxaloacetate, is being reduced to malate. And the enzyme that is doing this is called malate dehydrogenase. A malate is free to leave the mitochondria. And it does that. So once the malate is formed, the malate leaves the mitochondria. Now that was the sole purpose of malate in these series of reactions. Eh? The only reason why we are forming malate is because oxaloacetate cannot cross the, the mitochondrial membranes. So once the malate is now out in the cytosol, it has served its purpose. Its purpose was, uh, was that of transport. It's out in the cytosol. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Malate. We can now convert the malate back into oxaloacetate. So we use malate dehydrogenase once again. But we just, to distinguish its location, we say it's cytosolic malate dehydrogenase. But this is the reverse reaction of what you saw before. So the malate is being converted to oxaloacetate. So NAD plus is being converted to NADH. So in other words, the malate is being oxidized to oxaloacetate. And again, it's cytosolic malate dehydrogenase. This oxaloacetate is then converted to PEP, or in other words, phosphoenol pyruvate. And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called PPCK, which stands for phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase. And this reaction, CO2 um, is given off, and we need one molecule of GTP to be converted to GDP. And what we have done there is done, the, we have finished the first bypass reaction. So I hope you guys got that. All right, so just in case you didn't, let's recap everything. So pyruvate is carboxylated to oxaloacetate. 
and the enzyme we use is pyruvate carboxylase. It's an ABC enzyme, meaning that it uses ATP, its cofactor is biotin, and CO2. It's a carboxylation reaction. Now, once the oxaloacetate is formed in the mitochondrial matrix, the oxaloacetate cannot leave the mitochondria. The mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to oxaloacetate. So what the mitochondria does is that it converts the oxaloacetate to malate using the enzyme mitochondria malate dehydrogenase. And NADH is converted to NAD+. Once malate is formed, the malate leaves the mitochondrial matrix and goes into the cytosol. The sole purpose of malate was to get into the cytosol. Once the malate is in the cytosol, the malate is reconverted to oxaloacetate using cytosolic malate dehydrogenase. And NAD plus is converted to NADH plus H plus. This is an oxidation reaction. So in the matrix, oxaloacetate is reduced to malate. And in the cytosol, we have a reverse reaction. So the malate is oxidized to oxaloacetate. Another thing to be very careful about, please, when you're, if you're drawing this diagram, show the conversion. Some people try a kind of smart thing. And they say, well, oh gosh, I can't remember if it was NADH going to NAD plus or the other way around. So they just put a curve and they don't put the arrowhead. If you're in my exam, I'm going to take off marks because I need to know that you understand what is happening. So just remember, NADH plus H plus goes to NAD plus in a reduction reaction. And NAD plus goes to NADH plus H plus in an oxidation reaction. Once you have the oxaloacetate now, the PEPCK, which is phosphorinol pyruvate carboxykinase, will convert the oxaloacetate to phosphorinol pyruvate. CO2 is removed and GTP is converted to GDP. All right, now look at something cool. At the beginning of the reaction, CO2 was added. At the end of the reaction, CO2 was removed. All right? This is one way of pushing the reaction forward. We required one ATP molecule, and in this reaction, to remove the CO2, we require one GTP molecule. Hey guys, so we have come to the end of gluconeogenesis part two. It was short, it was sweet. Um, if this video was, was helpful, please like the YouTube video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Biochem GM, and you know, become a biochemian like us. And as usual, we would really like to hear your feedback. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you all. And thank you guys for everything you have done for us so far, all the feedback and so on. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And more videos coming soon, guys. So take care and best of luck in your biochem. Bye, guys.